Okay, now I am going to share with you four fundamentals to a happy, balanced, culture-free, and akhira oriented child. I've already spoken about how the house is very important, the environment for them to grow, and that is from zero when they are born until they reach the age of puberty and then until they leave the household. And then how you build the ties and bridges with them as a little child and how you educate them through leadership, through examples. Now I'm going to talk about the four elements and fundamentals so that your child is happy, balanced, culture-free, knows where they are headed in the future. One of the things that I get asked a lot these days, and this is for male and female, the ages from 20 to 35, sometimes even to 40, when someone comes to me with a big, huge surprise question, and that is, I don't know my head from my toes. I am confused. Uh, my life I have stalled. I can't go any further. What can I do? I don't know where I am. Please help. And it's unbelievable. And uh, many times people call me on the phone, but on the phone, I don't want to talk on the phone. It takes a lot of energy and I need to suss the person. I need you to speak to me so I can read your body language and get a whole idea about who you are, what it is you want. But let me go back here to the child and speak about how you avoid your child reach that age of confusion. It really is sad that a child is 20 years of or even higher than that and still don't know what their purpose in this life it is. Some of them, they say, I know my purpose in this life to worship Allah, but I don't feel it in my heart. Of course, you won't feel it because worshiping Allah is leading a life in the best of what you can be, doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said to do, but that is another topic. The first thing here, as your child grows, from the very young age until until they reach home until forever do not and i will say here do not spy on them do not check their phones do not ask them how let me look at your computer don't do anything of the sorts it is not your job allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited التجسس, and that is the spying spying is a personality splitter your child is going to develop two sides of his personality the size that who he really is and the side he the one who he wants you to see when you spy they will hide and they will manipulate reality to their advantage so that when you look for example i'm going to give you your child reaches the age of puberty he's a young man and he goes outside, he meets with his friends, it's a certainty, 1000% that he's gonna be uh, into the world of women, girls and all that kind of stuff. This is a reality, there is no escape from it, especially that the hormone development, all that kind of stuff. And at that moment there, what we need to do is guide and be there for the child, not put him on the pedestal of accusation. So, I don't want to go and check in his computer because if I go there and I find the triple X or four X's things, what is that going to tell me? I'm going to feel extremely sad. It's going to break me. I failed in his education or her education. And it's getting to a point where, and the child then will say, ha ha, my parents check on my computer, they check on me, so I better develop another personality, something that I put it right in their face and the other one is who I am. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explicitly for Bayd at Jesus. And in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, when Yaqub, Allah teaches us a great lesson. And in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells something about Yaqub. Because you and me, when we read the story of Yaqub, we can tell this one like this. Okay, the ten brothers took Yusuf, took Joseph, Yusuf alayhi salam. And they went away, a walking distance of half a day. And they threw, their, they threw their brother in a well. They got rid of him and they came back at night. Yaqub alayhi salam, when they told him that, what did he do? He didn't isolate them one by one, investigate the issue and tell me you until he finds the weak link. Because if he did that, the one who said don't kill Yusuf and put him in a well was the one with a better intention. He didn't want Yusuf to be hurt, but it's the majority that took over. Yaqub could have asked individually his kids 
and spied and went and investigated until they told him where Yusuf a.s. was. And Yaqub a.s. is a prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِنَّهُ لَذُوْ عِلْمٍ لِمَا عَلَّمْنَاهُ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Allah says Yaqub has been given an unbelievable great in quantity and quality knowledge but the majority of people don't know of course we don't know because according to me and to you we would go and investigate to get Yusuf back in town at home right but he didn't he said you have plotted something and Allah knows of that plot and I will trust Yusuf to Allah this is the top of the Tawheed trusting things to Allah I have done this with all my children I have never never ever went into their phone or their laptops or uh, uh, spied on them or doubted them or nothing I never follow them in the streets to see where they go I never spied their friends never done anything I trusted everything to Allah and my sunnah in that is Yaqub salam, the prophet in that and obviously the teachings of Islam spying on your child I will say again it will create a personality splitter and the more you spy on him or on her the more split they become and they will always give you the face that you want but behind it you will find a very very ugly face and on that day blame only yourself to have really really narrowed the chains on them so please 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 don't spy trust so trust don't spy this is like a crucial element number two use the learning errors and mischiefs as a reward opportunity this will surprise you let's say you have two or three children or you have one child or let's say you have two or three children something bad gets done at home and i will tell you something about my example <laughs> sometimes at home i find something that has disappeared my watch my something like that and I go okay where it is one it's obvious that one of my children had taken the, the thing or has done something I call them all who has done this and you get an inequivocal and a, a consensus between all not me I know one of them has done it it's impossible but what I do that and I go okay you speak the truth to me tell me have you done it? And they go, no. And you, no. You, no. And then I say, Sakalakhir, go. At other times, I tell them, okay, when it's only one child, or when I have like a shorty, it's one of them, or I bring one of them, like the, the guy, the culprit, and I say, or the girl, and I will say, did you do this? They will keep looking at me, and the, the body language speaks it's them. And I then drop the bomb on them, and I will say this, look, my son, look at my daughter. Tell me the truth. And I will not punish you. Whatever you say, I believe it. Tell me the truth. Wallahi al-Azim, my children today, sometimes I'm totally amazed by the amount of their honesty. Even with me. It's because I taught them that being honest is something to be rewarded for even if you have sinned or caused mischief before that. My brothers and my sisters, always, 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 Promise if they speak the truth that you will not punish them. And what you do, and here is my golden rule that I have always held in my heart, that I hold now and I will hold ever. And Alhamdulillah that I'm giving my talk so that my daughters listen to this talk and my sons and they will learn from it. Don't punish for the crime, reward for the truth. I repeat, your child has done something evil, don't punish them for it reward them for being honest and truthful with you wallahi al-azim just like we say teach people to love allah they will obey allah more fear has never generated a good amount deal of worship or respect if i respect you because i love you it has more impact on my life and more meaning than if i respected you because i am afraid of you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear brothers and my sisters, loves to be worshipped because he is loved, not because he is feared. When you want to commit a sin, remember, fear Allah. But when you are doing good, love Allah. This is exactly what I mean. Do not punish your child because of the crime or the mistake that he has made and reward them for the truth that they have spoken. And by this many times, I swear to Allah, many times I do this with my kids. 
when they speak the truth, I hug them and I say, Mashallah Alik, and I completely, completely, completely erase what they have done before uh, away. That's it. And my children from that there, Alhamdulillah, they learned that honesty leads always to great status. Istighfar, my brother, then we say, Istighfarullah. If you look at it, what is it? It is an acknowledgement and a form of speaking the truth to Allah. When you say, Astaghfirullah, you acknowledge to Allah that you have committed the sin. And then in that saying, you acknowledge and is a request for forgiveness. That's exactly when the child speaks the truth. When your child says, yes, I've done it, don't punish them for the crime. But look at the act of them being honest and sincere and reward them for that. And you will teach your child something unbelievable. They will not lie. And in the sight of Allah, they will be written as speakers of the truth. A siddiq is the one who speaks the truth all the time. And this is a great status in Allah. But if every time they make a problem, and you go, who did it? I come here, smack, 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 smack. Then that's it. One day the child is not never going to speak the truth. And then what you are teaching him indirectly that when you lie, you won't get punished. But when you speak the truth, you get punished. And that's it. You have made a liar of a young human being. And on the day of Qiyamah, you bear the consequences of what you have done. Also, another thing, my dear brothers and my sisters, in this matter here about the child and what you teach them. Please, please, please do not waste your energy and do not waste anything that is in your potential to manipulate the freedom of your child. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the first 13, 14 years until he reaches his puberty, Allah doesn't write any evil deed that the child does. Subhanallah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't hold the child to the sins he commit, even if, let's say, the child knows that stealing is haram. You have taught him that as a parent. Yet he sees candy and he sees sweets and cakes and cupcakes and things like that and he goes and steals them. Allah will not write it against him. Why do you punish him? Are you better than Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look in the infinity of the blessings and the love of Allah. Any child that does something good, the reward of that action is recorded for him. And any time he does something evil, that evil is not written against him until the age of puberty. Allah gives him a positive head start for this life, not heavy by the amount of sins he has committed. A lot of parents, unfortunately, put a lot of negativity and sins on the back of a little child. And when the child reaches the age of puberty, he is too heavy under the boots of you have done this, you have done that, you haven't been good this, you haven't been good that. Please, please, please. I have seen enough people at this age here, like from 20 to 35, who are still confused about life. They still don't know how to be a proper human being and it breaks the heart. Number three, let them have one single personality. Respect their choices. And if you remember at the beginning when I said, teach your child leadership, teach your child self-esteem. Also throughout that teaching, let them have a personality. Don't manipulate their personality. Don't change their personality. I see enough confused youth today and young men with families. Subhanallah. And I didn't think that I would see that at one point in my life. People who are about to get married, they still don't know how to take a decision properly. Why? Because the parents have abused them to no end by always taking decisions for them, bossing them to take decisions. I know a brother who is married with two kids. His father still doesn't respect him. And what does that give? Give to his wife that her husband is nothing else but a, poor, a pair of slippers. And guess what? She doesn't respect him as well. And the moment she speaks to him, if you were something, your dad would have respected you. My brothers and my sisters, allow your kids to have a personality from the young age. If he throws a tantrum, don't tell him stop. Try to understand why is he doing that? Why is she doing that? If the child is hard and he doesn't want to do something, don't break him. Don't try to break him. Try to understand him. Breaking leads nowhere. Understanding leads everywhere. Again, I would say this. Let your kids have their own personality. Play with them. Discover their personality. See what they are good at and make it big. And what they are bad at, don't break it. Work with them. We all have our defects. 
So where could that defects to minimize them? At any one point in our existence, my brothers and my sisters, there is this universal law write it in gold. At any one time, we are minimizing risks, increasing our profitability, the benefits. That's what we are doing. When you drive, you are trying to minimize the risk because why you don't want to have any entanglement with another somebody. So at any one point, respect their personality. If they say no, say no. Subhanallah, ignorance in Islam leads to a lot of problems. A lot of men want to change their wives because them as a little kid were not given the opportunity to have their personality. And this creates a lot of conflict. And this is why a lot of men are very insecure. So when he marries, he's too much unsure, unexperienced, the first bond in the marriage instead, let, it's not let's love each other, it's you must obey me. He has to secure his place because he is challenged from day one. And this is a big mistake. If the parents had taught the child to have his or her personality, that wouldn't have happened at that time there. Number four, be ready to let him or let her go as they grow into adulthood. Many people complain, my child don't listen to me when they are uh, adult, when they are getting to the age of uh, adulthood. And they say, when they were little kid, I told them go right, they go right, go left, go left, and all that kind of stuff. My dear brothers and my sisters, this is a common mistake we all make. When the child doesn't listen to you, when the child is secluded in their room, when the child closes the door on them and they don't want you in, and all that kind of stuff here is what they are saying to you desire for personal space to find their own path because you've bossed them enough in their lives and now is their time to find their own path but if you took them as partners throughout their life and you gave them personality and you respected their point of view they will not do that because it's just a progression to how they were before usually when they break away from you it's because you have been an obstacle in their life making decisions so pay attention to that also when they pull away it's their desire for personal decisions and how to learn they want to make decisions and make mistakes and learn you were there once I was there once what do you expect any different from the children and number three is when they are away from you and you suddenly they feel like they detached from your world it's because they want their independence this is it goes with the age otherwise how are they gonna be proper adults for you people that are confused and have called me or emailed me or texted me or whatever, you know what I mean by this. At this age and you still don't know where you're going because your parents have never ever let you grow responsibly. They kept you under their shoes under the name of protection, but it's actually under the name of manipulation and ignorance. I want you, my brothers and my sisters to pay attention to this. When your children pull away from you in a way or another, they suddenly don't talk to you that much and things like that. It is not that they don't want to listen to you. They want just to reach their opinion by themselves so that they can learn how to be a full responsible adult. My dear brothers and my sisters, to recap the whole thing, stop spying. Spying creates a different personality. It's what I call the personality splitter. Also, use their learning errors and mischief as a reward. Don't punish them for the crime, reward them for the truth. Number three, let them take and have one single personality and be responsible. Let them grow into the beautiful adults that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them to be. And okay, Allah made the forgiveness of sins so that we make errors and we learn from them and not get back to them. He doesn't expect us to be like angels. And number four, be ready to let them go and appreciate as they grow that they are actually seeking their personal space, their personal decisions making process, their personal independence. And last but not least, let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters, children are like chicken. I know you're thinking like they're scared. No, no, no. Children are like chicken. Think of this. If you have one chicken from the time Allah gives it life until the day it grows, a chicken, let's say, will live three years. You will nourish the chicken for three years continuously every day and you take care of them. And one day you decide to eat the chicken. The chicken won't feed you for a whole night. You eat it in one night, the chicken. That's it. And what that means is you can take care of the children for 20 years and one day they just will turn up as if you've done nothing. Be ready to accept that. It's painful. It's heartbreaking. You have done what you have done. 
You have run what you have run. You've spent money what you have spent. And you really put your heart and your life there. You had high aims and goals and hopes for them. And you did everything. And you even went hungry at times for them to go satisfied. And then when they grow, they will look at you. And they will remember one thing you did bad one day. And that's who you are to them, a bad parent. Be patient. Be patient. That's the price of what it is today. What you have done will not go unrewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one day when they have their children, they will get back to their senses. And if they don't and they stay as they are, don't lose everything. Everything you have done is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.